The sea is an incredibly powerful force of nature, and when a storm rolls in, it can wipe away coastal structures and sink ships with ease. But humans have been fighting against this force for a long time, so let's take a look at one of the tools we have used, breakwaters. Breakwaters offer some protection against the power of the oceans, not by lowering sea levels, but instead reducing the impact of incoming waves. By smoothing out the ebb and flow of the water, ships sheltering behind them and coastal structures protected by them have to deal with vastly reduced wave heights. We're going to focus on Plymouth Breakwater. Plymouth is in the southwest of England, and as such gets battered by intense storms coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. Construction of the one and a half kilometre long structure began in 1812, with the first seven tonnes of locally mined stone dropped into the bay on the 8th of August that year. Large blocks weighing 10 tonnes each were dropped down to the seabed, complemented by smaller blocks of up to two tonnes, with rubble to fill in the gaps between them. In the first year alone, 16,000 tonnes of stone had been placed, and by March the first stones were breaching the surface. But Mother Nature was not going to back down so easily. In 1816, a severe storm battered the unfinished breakwater, causing severe damage and altering the shape of its seaward face. After the damage was repaired, another devastating storm struck in 1824, once again altering the shape of the structure. The engineers subsequently concluded that the ocean wanted it to be that shape and decided to leave it as it was. To keep the profile stable, they created interlocking armour plates carved from the much harder granite found on Dartmoor, north of the city. In the end, the breakwater was comprised of approximately 4.5 million tonnes of limestone and around 200,000 tonnes of granite. As soon as the breakwater had breached the surface, merchant ships began to run into it, prompting the construction of a lighthouse on one end and a beacon on the other. As a side note, that beacon is really rather interesting. It's a 1.8 metre wide sphere on a 5 metre pole, but you can actually climb up the pole and shelter inside the sphere. Whilst the sphere won't provide a great deal of protection from the elements, it will stop you from drowning if you happen to wreck your ship upon the breakwater. So that's how most permanent breakwaters, including Plymouths, are built. Basically, throw a load of stone into the ocean at a shallow spot and build a wall. But why build one in the first place? After all, the geography around Plymouth itself provides substantial shelter from storms coming in from the east or the west. The problem is, however, those natural features can actually funnel and concentrate storms if they roll in from the south. When the breakwater was being built some 200 years ago, the British Navy could see the Napoleonic Wars on the horizon and wanted a safe place to anchor their warships in the southwest. Plymouth was the perfect place, aside from the shipwrecking storms that battered the harbour. In a single day in 1804, 10 ships were sunk while anchored in the bay. You may have noticed the fort part way along the breakwater. This hints at its dual purpose. It was there to protect Plymouth's harbours from the weather, but it was also there to protect Plymouth from waterborne attack. Without the protection of the breakwater, Plymouth would not be the bustling city it is today. Its expansive dockyard simply would not exist. It's not without its downsides, however, as placing such a large structure into the water can have a dramatic impact on the surrounding marine life. Thankfully, in Plymouth's case, it seems to have been a benefit to the wildlife, with the large and small stone blocks providing an ideal place for fish to swim and, more importantly, hide from predators. Breakwaters can also inhibit coastal erosion by reducing the impact of incoming waves, which would otherwise wash away sand and rock alike. Many coastal cities and towns simply wouldn't exist were it not for breakwaters taming the power of the seas. They truly are a symbol of human civilization's resistance against the harshness of the elements. If you liked the video, perhaps consider subscribing. 